Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. Bruce, what's going on, man? How are you? It's cold. My shoulder hurts, and um, I'm in Connecticut. With a hard roll. I don't have a hard roll. But there's one nearby. Can't be that far away. You're in Connecticut. Not in this household. Oh, really? Really? Okay. Learning something new. I thought hard rolls were like a part of the best part of being in Connecticut. No. What there are some no of best that? part? There is no best part of being in Connecticut. Yeah, that's where I was getting to. What's the temperature like up there today? He licked his finger and 47. Wow, that's not that bad. It's 81 today in Miami. If you were curious. It's good. Like, yeah. Sure, it's beautiful. Should be out on the beach enjoying it. Right? 85 wow. degrees. A beach. It's a, it's a good day. Beautiful women in scantily clad bikinis. Good looking men walking around with their muscular bods all hanging out. Wow. Um, I thought Man, you were- I want to cover it all because I don't want to offend a goddamn soul. I don't want to offend anybody. Why don't you take a big swig of that orange prime right there? Our topic today is Tatanka. When I think of Tatanka, I think of that opening sound on his theme song. The very, uh, I don't know, downtrodden Bruce would hit us with the yee, 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 or no yeet. Either way, we are excited you guys are with us here today. I, we have had a lot of fun talking Uh, A lot of fun things, you know, uh, we talked about Batista recently, and and, and we're going to talk about the evolution of DX. We're going to talk about Royal Rumble 08 and WWE referees and Steve Austin's heel turn and so much more. It's going to be a fun year here on the show. I greatly appreciate all you guys tuning in. Um, But our topic today is one that, man, we've probably been meaning to talk about for a long time. Your old pal Tatanka. You and uh, Silva have. Well, we got a lot of requests for it on uh, social media. Okay, like, good. believe it or not, yeah. like I, I think, awesome. I think a lot of our listeners, their favorite wrestlers and favorite wrestling moments are often shaped by how old they are when it happens. Like I've got a friend here in town, Arky Shea, big radio guy here in my local market of Huntsville, Alabama. Arky, yeah, he uh, his favorite wrestler growing up was Tatanka, and he's a few years younger than me. And I was like, I don't get that at all. Tatanka was not one of my guys as a kid, but it doesn't mean it wasn't somebody's guy, like our pal Arky. Everybody needs somebody sometime. Chris Chavis, born June 8th, 1961, in Pembroke, North Carolina. He's a bodybuilder before he meets Buddy Rogers. It points him in the direction of Larry Sharp at the Monster Factory. And after how much being, did Buddy get out of that? Was that was that Buddy's deal? He'd introduce you, but you had to slide him some some doll hairs. Buddy, let, let me explain something to you about Buddy. Okay. Buddy didn't put his socks on if he wasn't getting paid by somebody for something. Buddy was Buddy was a guy, man, that that like actually made the slip and fall discovery of that. Oh my God, they got cameras. Buddy would do a slip and fall and get color. Wait, are you being serious right now? Yes, I'm being serious right now. You knew of him doing slip and falls where he would get color, and then he got caught on a camera doing it to himself. Yeah. How have I not heard this story? doing it. And he would sue. Oh, my God. My back. I'm so old. Oh, God damn. I'm, how old are you, sir? I'm 94, but I look good because uh, I try to keep in shape. Yeah. Blood. And wearing white because the blood shows up there. Sure. Mm-hmm. True worker. A lot of the guys you just do that. You know, so many people used to do that all the time and shit. Go do, go drop a fucking pickle jar because pickles are shit. And <laughs> people will believe that, okay, hey, I can see slipping on a pickle jar because nobody wants to be near that piece of shit. 
And then they slip and they go, oh my God, my back, my sciatic. And they find a doctor that's in on the deal. And the doctor goes in and says, yeah, I'm asking. It costs about, I don't know, $942,000. And then they get their $346,000. And then the other one gets the rest of it and you move on. Problem came along sometime in uh, really in the 90s that cameras became a regular thing right in supermarkets in department stores and in you know just pretty much everywhere and so when you see an old man look around the aisle take a jar of pickles whoops take a bump this was the other part that got me too. This was the other just incredible thing that really got me. Is is I was told and 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 listen, I'm giving you guys hearsay. I'm giving you rumor and innuendo here, but I'm giving you uh stories that have been told and retold for centuries upon centuries. Centuries a hundred years, right? So centuries upon centuries upon centuries. Um about buddy doing this, but uh, Famous for it. He was famous for it. He would tell story. He would tell stories about it. He, Buddy Rogers, told me a story about one of his slip and fall escapades while I was at the Cauliflower Alley Club in California when they used to hold it there at the Sportsman's Lodge or whatever. But so he would take the bump in case someone saw him because he could take a bump. Oh, you would take the bump. Get the gimmick out. Oh, my God, I'm a poor old man. The pickle jar hit me in the head, and I'm bleeding all over. Oh, my back. Take him to the hospital. He's got a bad back, man. Holy right. shit. This fall, fuck this poor old man's back up. Because he's, he's listed as an accountant at J&J. Burnham Snavitz. So that couldn't have hurt his back. Right. His real name wasn't Buddy Rogers. Right. So the, what are you going to check up, man? Unless you're an old wrestling fan. And if you are a wrestling fan, then you're going, oh my God, Mr. Rogers, are you okay? Right. So yeah. But <laughs> Buddy fucking didn't do shit if he wasn't getting paid for it. And... And don't take this as, as Buddy Rogers bashing, man. This is just the old school way, old school carny shit that used to be done all the time, every single day. It's on the road to, hey, where are we going today? Are we, are we going to pass that convenience store there? You know, yeah, the one in Nuevo Laredo. Right. Yeah, let's stop in there and rob them again. This shit happened all the time. So when you say that Tatanka got introduced, I'm sure that somewhere along the line there was an envelope with Buddy's name on it, or just the cash. Yeah, quick little Google search. Yeah, he did, quote unquote, suffer a fall at a supermarket. I had never heard this story before, and, and this quote was attributed to Mr. Rogers. Screw your friends and be nice to your enemies so your enemies will become your friends and then you can screw them too. It's about right, yeah. Sounds like buddy. Wow. That sums him up. Great guy, loves the business. Nature boy. Maybe not such a great guy. Yeah. I, I, I got to tell you, man, I enjoyed, I, if, if there were, if there were ever, you know, when you think of fireside chats, man, and, and you think about sitting around the fire at night with a bunch of dudes that are in the same industry or something like that, and you have having an opportunity to have a few adult beverages and guys go around the, the horn and they tell stories. I guarantee goddamn to you, Buddy Rogers was in that circle. I was there, man, because he told some entertaining stories. God, what a storyteller he was, man. Absolutely fantabulous. But he's full of shit, too. 
Right. I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure there's a lot of Buddy Rogers. Oh my God, he was this lovers and all that shit. I love Buddy too. I'm just telling you, he's full of shit. Well, he was uh, maybe not full of shit when he introduced Chris Chavis to uh, Larry Sharp at the Monster Factory. He got it somewhere. After being uh, trained, he uh, hooks up with George Scott. And Travis is nicknamed the War Eagle. Um, when do you? I mean, his first tryout matches with the company are, are in the World Wrestling Federation, rather, or in early 1991 as the War Eagle. He's going to have some matches with the Brooklyn Brawler and Dale Wolf. You remember seeing the War Eagle uh, in in early 1991? I have no idea what the hell we called him. I don't think I was there in, in early 91. I think you were well, there. I- until- the spring, I think. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, look, I, I remember first time laying eyes on him. It, it was when when your Native American idols in the wrestling business right. are Wahoo McDaniel, a legit Native American, and legit badass and one of the best all-around athletes you will ever see and or hear and chief j strongbow who's joe scarpa (laughs) from italia uh you know and then you see all of a sudden tatanka my god (laughs) It's like you think, you think. Wait a minute! No, no, aren't aren't these damn Native Americans supposed to be fat, lazy, and on a horse? You know, Jack Briscoe, Jerry Briscoe, Native American, full blooded Native American, two of the baddest motherfuckers ever to put on a pair of wrestling boots. Just badass, scary. Will fuck you up just for looking at them sideways, or because they felt like fucking you, up. or because they could, but they weren't the the stereotypical cowboys and Indians that had been portrayed. Got it through the movies and television as cowboys wore cowboy hats, Indians wore headdresses, right. So, you know, Wahoo was depicted that way. Now, Wahoo, I think, Jay, Jay Strongwell was over like son of a bitch in New York. You put Jay Strongbow and that Chief Jay Strongbow gimmick anywhere else, anywhere else in the world, I'll even include India in that world. And he wouldn't have gotten over for shit. But Wahoo got over everywhere he went because he was real. And you knew it. Tatanka, Chris Chavez, was real. He was a real Lumbee Indian. So you said the first time you laid eyes on him, would that have been when he was trying to make it in the WWE? Probably. probably, I mean, probably just, yeah, when he was coming in looking for a tryout or something. Probably the first time I saw him. Yeah. He winds up signing with the company in late 91. By that point, you're not there, but, uh, he gets these tryouts early in the year and actually signs later in the year. And as you said, yeah, but I did it. It was on me. I signed Deb it. Was, uh, I thought Jr. signed it. In I, signed it. Me. I was making JR of- signed everyone else after that. Well, that was the funny thing is Jr. wasn't there in 91, but you sometimes like well, yeah, the best well, JR, JR signed it. Um, weren't there when jr was there but why the fuck oh well (laughs) i like that this kept going you're like that's good enough we'll just stop right there i'm just i'm just saying signed you motherfucker he signed all he signed you too yeah hey let me tell again and i'll tell i said this every time i wouldn't be here for one for jr that's right 
And that is that is the honest to God truth, man. Jim helped me so fucking much throughout my early career and gave me opportunities that you know nobody else would and had no reason to do it whatsoever and helped me along the way. So I got nothing but love and respect and uh, gratitude for JR. I like to make fun of him though, but you know what? <laughs> you make fun of all your friends. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, but you know what? I can, he makes fun of me too. He makes yeah. fun of me in a more spirit, in a, in a more mean spirited way than I make fun of him, but that's okay because that's JR. That's why I love him. So it's okay. JR ever slip in a supermarket on some pickles. Wouldn't put it past him. Oh, come on, man. He ain't going to take the bump, though. Come on. Are you kidding me? Well, why would he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he signs with the company, he being Tatanka, pronouns, pal. Um, he's dubbed as a Lumby Indian and Native American Chris Chavis. You're not in the WWF when all this takes place, but I'm sure you saw some of the original vignettes. What'd you think of them? I mean, these vignettes to introduce these classic characters we've spent a lot of time talking about, whether it was Mr. Perfect or the million dollar man or dusty roads. What'd you think of the job they did introducing Tatanka to the audience? Well, it's going to sound like sour grace, but I thought they were shitty. Oh, and here's, well, what, I like here's what I thought they were shitty. I thought they were, I thought they were shitty because they were very, uh, networky, pretty, and just kind of so, the the writing was lame. The way it was shot was lame. In my opinion, I, I did shit differently. I, I I was down and dirty, man. I got into the guys. I want to get into someone's psyche. I wanted them to believe they were Tatanka. I didn't want them to be Chris Chavez playing Tatanka. And as far as vignettes in general, I think they're invaluable as far as helping to get talent over because it introduces the audience to this person long before they ever see them step into a ring and wrestle. And by the time they get to that point, the audience is used to hearing their music. They see them come out and they go, Oh my God, it's the, it's the tank guy. And I'm good with that. Well, if you had been there, what do you think you would have done? I think they would have been rougher. I think that they, I think they would have been a little bit more real and a little rougher uh, from the standpoint of instead of puns and cute little sayings and very, very stereotypical things, I think I would have gone a little bit more reality based right because he was fucking lumpy indian and he had an edge to him in real life but he also had man he had a chip on his shoulder in the best of ways a very likable and um yeah you know he just was likable and i i i it, thought it came across as acting instead of okay chris chavez now your name is tatanka now give me some attitude man and tell me a story tell me a story about what a lumby indian is tell me about the lumby tribe tell me about why you are so proud of your native american heritage tell me man tell me without telling me that uh I'm a racist old white man that, hey, here's how I look at it from a Native American. Let's tell that story so that not, not just the Lumbee Indian, but the Hispanic guy sitting there eating his lunch in McAllen, Texas, during his three-hour lunch while he's off doing news work, or the 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 Irish ditch digger, or the Italian guy at the local pizzeria making your pizza, make it so that 
they're one of you, they're you and you're them. And I just felt it came across, I felt it came across as uh, I, I, a little hokey. I'll get even hokier for you. I'll get to the I'll get to the ones that I produced later on that were just the shits. But <laughs> I guess we'll get there. Yeah, let's talk about the debut. He debuts on TV February 1st on Superstars, and he's got the red striped dye in his hair, and he's now known as Tatanka. I guess it's no surprise that they went with a quote unquote gimmick name. Would you have preferred Native American Chris Chavis or Chavis, however you said it, over Tatanka? Or did you like the name Tatanka? I love the name Tatanka. Sounded cool. It was different. And in and in about two seconds, you 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 figured out who he is. We um for those who don't know, Tatanka is uh I guess it's called the Lakota word, which means uh, Lakota word, which means bison. Uh so he's gonna wrestle oh, and then, there you go. That's actually the name right. of the song, I think. Yeah. Uh that Jim Johnson did. He's gonna wrestle and and introduce this war dance of sorts to the Lumbee tribal war cry. Uh, I don't guess you have it in you for us to take a listen to the Bruce rendition of that war cry. No. Okay. Uh, his first Here's major. Pro- and I, and I'm sorry. I, th- 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 what this is going to be is this is going to be one of those all over the places today. I don't know if you figured that out yet or not. I got that. Okay. Where. You really want people to believe in. You want people to to get into a story. And you want to believe your character, man. Because if you don't believe your character, nobody else will. If you're just out there playing a part, the fan may play their part as the fan. But if you're who you are, and you tell me that you believe that and you live that and you drill that into the head of whoever the viewer is, they're going to believe it. The reason they're going to believe it is because it's who you are and it's who you become. And that is what, you know, to talk was. So there was, you know, we always used to, you try to help talent, try to give talent feedback after their matches and tell them what they did right, what they did wrong, and how they could improve. And what if you tried to do this here? What if you tried to do that over there? And Owen Hart had a match. <laughs> and Owen Hart comes back from the match. And Chief J. Strongbow was the producer of that, that match, the agent. Help put that match together. And says, whoa, 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 Stu, you're a, no, Dennis, Dennis was, that was Kurt Henning. Stu was Brett. The fuck did he call Owen? Oh, well, whatever he called Owen. No, hey, let's call him Owen for these purposes. Got it. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're in the middle of you're in the middle of a fight, I mean, and 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 all of a sudden you're you're gonna do this this hokey thing where we spin around and you do this do this 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 stupid move. And Owen looks at, at uh, Strongwell and he says, "No, no, Chief, I see what you're saying, man. I'd probably just." Um, Slap the mat real hard and uh, dance around the ring in a war dance and go woo woo woo. So again, it's whose reality do you want to be? In? Right. Where right. do you want to live? Which reality? Woo woo woo. The Tonka's first major program is with Rick Martell. He's going to get a victory over him on the WrestleMania Eight card, and that program continues when Martell would steal his sacred eagle feathers. You don't do that, man. As a shoot, you don't do that. You don't steal a guy's leather jacket, and you don't steal his eagle feathers. fuck you. See, you're making ha-ha. You're making ha-ha. You're laughing at it. Go back to a two-shot. He laughed at it. Well, once upon a time, at it. 
he talked about a guy getting his leather jacket stolen. Another time, I think Randy Savage had no, his no, hat. No. We talk, hang on, hang on. We talked about a guy getting his letterman's jacket that he had earned, that he had spent four long years starting Wait, at jacket. the University of West Texas State. Okay, and someone stole his jacket. That's the the origin of it. Okay. Okay, that's the origin of it. Reality based in reality. Okay. Okay. You still, dude. First of all, to be presented an eagle feather is like the highest, well, God, highest honors you could possibly get. Then for someone to steal it and damage it in some way is the ultimate insult and slap in the face. But these eagle feathers, this is serious business here. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Look it up. Uh, right next is right. It's right next. To Buddy Rogers falls down, goes boom, boom, and the fucking grocery store gets color right next to the eagle feathers. So the color got on the eagle feathers. So now the entire Lumbee Nation is going to come back and fuck up the Nature Boy and Rick Martell. And Rick Martell. Motherfuckers. Yeah. The fuck Martell. He's Canadian anyway. They don't care about the Eagles. Eagles American pride. God bless America. So listen, the big talk uh, a lot uh, in this era was that Tatanka was undefeated. That and was actually, I think it's illegal to do that. To take Eagle feathers? To damage them, yeah. It's illegal. Yeah. You you mean a bald eagle, right? You don't just mean a yeah. regular run of the mill eagle. I mean a real goddamn American eagle. I mean an American eagle. Okay, isn't that a store in the mall? Isn't that next to Hollister? Ask me the last time that I stepped foot in a fucking mall. Couldn't tell you. Yeah, I couldn't tell you either. I, I got did a signing one time. I did a signing one time in Pennsylvania, I believe it was. And the guy takes us to a uh what are those other things called? Uh come on, you know what I'm talking Shopping about. Shopping center? No, no, they Walmart. sell the fleas, they sell fleas there. Flea market. Flea market. Takes us to a flea market and puts me in the Thomas. The tank, Thomas. Yeah, yeah Thomas, Thomas the tank. tank. Yeah, engine room. So for every one of my pictures, you I'm got Thomas the tank there. behind you. People take pictures of me. There's Tom. I made sure Tommy was in every one of them. Well, Tommy the tank. I son love Tommy the tank. I wrote on Tommy the tank, and so I have no idea how in the fuck I got on. Oh, American Eagle or whatever. Is that, did I say right? Yeah. Okay, no, I don't know. Man, dude, they have this thing called Amazon. My son works there. If I need something, I'll say, yo. Pick me up. up on these. Yeah. It's on aisle 417. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But like, I, my, my wife asked me. <laughs> we had to go pick up. Uh, things for my shoulder ahead of time in a uh, pharmacy. And I am walking through in pure amazement at all the things they have. It's like, oh my God. You go to Walgreens, a CVS, what were you in? One of those things, yeah. Yeah. They do have everything. You can get milk and frozen pizza. Dude, you never have to. You, if you live there, you never you have everything leave. you need. You yeah. never have to leave ever. Yeah, ever. So, you asked me about uh, eagle. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, and that's terrible. That's really yeah. terrible. But I'm just saying, me personally, I I haven't. No, absolutely not <laughs> going to a mall. I don't even know that we even have malls up here anymore. <laughs> you have malls, Bruce. 
So, so, okay, oh. now here's the thing. This phone is off. Yeah. Why is it okay? still ringing? The, the computer sound is off. But yet I'm still hearing shit going doodly do. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, didn't you? Yeah, I heard it. How many pain meds you on today? Well, I, I, dude, I have not been on a pain med of any kind, including Tylenol, since Sunday. A week wow. ago. Yeah. How many hours a night you sleeping on average? Okay, now you're getting into dangerous territory. I knew it was one of those. Yeah, not a whole lot of that going on. Ask ask. Ask me how much of this I have uh, Prime, orange had, Prime. had sent to save my life during this time. So I have a feeling you just, you text a WWE superstar for that. You don't actually go down to the mall and pick it up yourself. I got this in the mall. I'm sure they do. He has it everywhere else. I just, I just say, yo, bro, help me out. I'll come in. Those guys never gotten that to you. I, I'm kicking some ass, and then because it's because see, like the, the crew that runs with him are like just the most mellow, easygoing. If you mention something like, "Hey, boy, I like these envelopes." Logan will be like, hey, man, make sure you get some envelopes. And you'll have them but probably before you get home. They're, like, really good. They're they're excellent. That was why I hate asking uh, them. No, I, I, no, I really do. I hate ever asking. But when I do get low <laughs> and dangerously low to where I might have to go to one of these, what do you speak of again? Uh, a drugstore? Yeah. I, yeah. Pharmacy? Yeah. That you know, we're all say, Hey man, could you help a brother out? It's like there the next day, so I love them. You know, well, it's good having friends. I'm gonna tell you another story, okay? All right, it's another part of being grumpy. This is this is me trying, trying to get on the ungrumpy side of life. We talked on this show, I uh, about a man named Mattress Mac. Jim Max. Yes, sir. Okay. Good, close, dear, personal, longtime friend. Owns gallery furniture in Houston, Texas. And the last mattress that I purchased, I, I mean, I'd say 90% of the furniture in my home is from Mattress Mac. Right. And when we came up here, actually, before we came up here, he, he had done the presidential election um, kind of lottery thing where before the candidates were even chosen, you picked Republican or Democrat. If your party wins, you get your mattress free. So we go down. And we look, we needed a new mattress. We got the mattress. And um, it was one of those, I know, because I told you, because we were working together at the time, and I know I told you the story. And it was like, I said, I spent more for a mattress than I was making per month. Like, and if you were to combine like three months together, <laughs> I just spent more for a mattress than that. But if but if your your uh, your team won, right? Then you got it for free. So my team won, and I got the thing for free. And he was laughing his ass off when I walked in the store. And I said, "Oh, Matt, yeah, I won." I said, "But best thing about this is, is this is the absolute greatest mattress I have ever slept on." And it was one of his that was, you know, custom, special made, and blah, 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 blah. And now I can't get him. And I found out that my kids gave half my shit away. And I need to sleep upright in a certain position. And when I realized, well, hey, no, Luke, 
oh, I gave that bed to so and so. I don't know. You, well, it was it was in the house. I can't give things away in the house that are in the house. Um, got a little pissed. Just so I know, are you mocking your wife or your son there? Huh? Or, are you mocking your wife? I'm. I'm. I'm I, it's it's kind of a conglomeration of my wife and my son and my daughter. All three. Well. I'll tell you synergy. It sounds like, oh, they're all on thin ice. They're not going to mess around and drink your last prime. Are they? <laughs> so anyway, I find out that I purchased two mattresses when I got up here so that we would have places for our guests to sleep. You slept in them. One of them. You didn't stay here. You stayed. No, you hotel. made me stay at a hotel. I offered you. No. Room. No. no. So then, then no. That's, on my, then, then that's on my wife. Yeah. I get okay. it. So anyway, I, I'm a hotel friend. You stay in my house, but I stay in hotels near your home. I understand. It's better that way. Probably yeah. better that way. Yeah. Um, so I go up and I'm going to make myself the bed so I can sleep upstairs. And then, well, then I realized I have no more of the adjustable mattresses. And I'm livid. Last time I slept in the chair, the last time I didn't have these complications. I'm pissed. So I call my good, dear, close, personal, longtime friend, Mattress Mac, Jim McInbell, Gallery Furniture in Houston, Texas. No matter where you are, no matter what you need, you give Jim McInbell a call and you tell him you love him and tell him Bruce Pritchard sent you and yes. you get something because he will save. Holy shit! As we said it, he just sent me a text. That's the same thing. I say his name and he texts me. Well, well, hit his gimmick line. You started it and you didn't um, finish. So anyway, I, I, I took a picture of our bed and I said, Mac, I need this, but I need it in a split King so that I can put my side up and Steph can leave her side down or do whatever she wants over there. And, but this kind of guy, he is just like, yeah, you're still in Connecticut, right? I'm like, yeah, he goes, all right. Firm or soft? I said, oh, firm, baby talking hard and uh and like and so he, he's like just sending me like this mattress that probably was three months worth of uh what i was making back, back then. in the day yeah, yeah. see that, that's kind of that's kind of good friend that you, that you need there connie uh well hit us hit, hit us with his line when he closes the spots He'd reach in his back pocket. He'd look at the camera. Gallery furniture really will save you money. So there you go. We've done our unpaid sponsorship ads today for you love uh, it, Prime and Mattress Mac. Now tell us how you get your ding dong real, real hard. Well, that's well, where I was going because I like a hard mattress. If you know what I mean, Conrad, that's where I was. Did you hear what I said? Hard I said, mattress. I like it hard. He says, you love what about it. your wife on her side? She I said it she loves it hard. Has to have it hard. <laughs> Bluechew.com, boys and girls. Uh, today's episode is not sponsored by Prime or by Mattress Mac or Furniture Gallery. It is indeed sponsored by Blue Chew. It's what uh it's 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 gonna cure what ails you. Not really. But listen, it, it is a unique service. It delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. And you're going to have a lot of fun with it. I know Bruce and I have. Not together. That would have been weird. You can take them anytime, day or night, plan ahead, or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. And the process is simple. You sign up at BlueChew.com. You consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, prepared and shipped directly to your door, all in a discreet package. And I'm telling you, after you get that Blue Chew in you, you're going to be running around the house going, yay, 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 You'll be on an undefeated streak. Your wife will be doing a war dance. It's going to be high fives all around. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. 
How about this for a special deal for our listeners? Try it free. That's right. Free blue chew. When you go to promo code wrestle at checkout, just pay the $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Use our promo code wrestle to get your first month free. So visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank blue chew for sponsoring today's podcast where Bruce clearly did not want to talk about Tatanka. That is not true. I was talking about hard things. So tell me about your bed. Is your bed hard or you like it soft? I like it soft. I have, um, what we used to be sponsored by Helix mattress and they have a Helix plus for fat folks. It is the greatest mattress I have ever had when the wife and I travel uh, and we're on our ride home. Inevitably, one of us will say to the other, what are you looking forward to the most about being back at home? And it's the same answer every time the mattress. I haven't had a mattress Mac mattress yet, but you know, I'm about to be in the market for some more mattresses. I'll hit, I'll hit yeah. Mac up. Yeah. His shit's good. I, I, I gotta have a firm mattress, man. I, I gotta, it's gotta be firm. Can't have, can't have too much squish. Well, I mean, I got a lot of squish. But you have a little less thanks to our friends at Blue Chew with the promo code WRESTLE. Well, they'll get you hard, and that's the right way to be. Well, it was hard to uh, stomach the idea that Tatanka was being touted as being undefeated on TV, but he was losing on the house shows. Um, Counts house shows? Yeah, they don't count. Uh, uh, Even in Goldberg Streak, they didn't count. Please. Tatanka's winning streak even extends to a 40-man battle royal that actually comes out on one of the Coliseum home video releases. Other folks in that battle royal would have been names like Ted DiBiase, IRS, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, the Legion of Doom, and others. And this is a big win. And I know these days, you know, Coliseum Video is considered kind of an afterthought, but it was uh, it was it was a big deal to be featured in one of those matches on Coliseum Home Video, right? I, I mean, maybe not to you, but to much, you. yeah, I mean. The kids at home, and, they yeah. wear these things out. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And and it was always neat because I would always go into Blockbuster and or my local uh, video store uh, owner, and I always went immediately to the uh, wrestling section to see how many Coliseum videos were up and what who else might have one by God in our area. And what was rented and what wasn't. I mean, that was yes. a fun little thing to take a look at and see what's exactly. going on. What's not. Yep. SummerSlam 92, Tatanka gets a big win over the Berserker before the show starts and the matches that were taped for primetime wrestling. And you actually wind up coming back at the next television taping in Hershey. So Tatanka, what was your first impression of working with him professionally? And I know before you went back this most recent time, you said here on the program, if you could work with anybody in modern wrestling, who would it be? And you got excited about Bray Wyatt. Did you see that? Hey, maybe I could do something with Tatanka. Or did you not really get that vibe? And, and what did you think once you actually got to meet him and work with? Him? Well, no, and, 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 and see, here's the other thing. I, I had met Tatanka before and had worked with him a little bit. But also during that time, uh, of course, Undertaker and I were friends and Undertaker and Tatanka were friends. So whenever they were in the area, the three of us would always go out. So I kind of knew Chris already. I, I, I knew him. He was a good guy. I knew if he was endorsed by Undertaker, then, you know, good enough for Taker. He was good enough for me. And uh, so I, I had, I, I knew him. I knew him. I had had the opportunity to, to at least get to know the human being and just, you know, we had hit it off. We, we hit it off as friends before I came back to work and, and work with him, have that opportunity. But so Tatanka was the Berserkers' last match in WWE. Wow. How about that? I didn't think about that. Yeah. Blows the mind, huh? Never let certain people have longer than two hour layovers in Amsterdam. Just a, just like kids, just a pro tip. That's all. If your child says to you, hey, dad, because how many moms do we really have listening to us? Hey, dad, I'm going to Germany, and uh, 
I have, you know, on, on the way back, there's a much cheaper flight. Uh, the only difference is I have a little bit, bit of a longer layover and everything. Really, where are you laying over? Oh, I'm going to do like 11 hours in Amsterdam. Just say no. Because you could lose them. Well, I mean, he did wind up coming back. He was just gone for a little did while. Did he? I don't think he did. Yeah, he was back. He ever, uh, okay. He was back in October. His last match for a while. I mean, he missed all of September. <laughs> yeah, he, yes, he did. It's <laughs> <laughs> 29th in the next time. He's <laughs> uh, hey, what happened? I mean, I I know, my, booking, my booking sheets match up. I don't know. <laughs> we lost six weeks of my man. Just <laughs> going. Well, the reason I say that is because when uh, he was Nord the Barbarian in yeah. Mid-South, they blamed me because he was with me the last night before he walked out of the company. And I'm like, dude, he took, he was, we were all together. Wait, hang on though. Did you wind up doing drugs in a mobile home and that's how you lost him? Or I know that was Chris. No, that, that was not part of that night. This was with me and DiBiase. Okay. And like, I, I, I kid you not, like DiBiase and I took a, took a right. He took a left. And then <laughs> I didn't see him again for years. <laughs> I kid you not. And when I saw him, I was, hey man, where were you? <laughs> what the fuck? That's great. That's a true story, dude. So you're back, and uh, Tataka's here. He's going to be working house shows with the Mountie. He's going to get a TV match against Dale Wolf, which is going to feature the debut of doink in the crowd. So we've got doink the clown, but he's actually in the crowd. And, uh, the story going in the survivor series is it's going to be Tatanka and Rick Martell about those pesky feathers. And Tatanka actually reclaims them with a victory in Richfield, Ohio. Uh, where did you think this winning streak that was being referred to on television would land? I mean, where are you at with winning streaks and wrestling in general? I suppose. Eh, you know, it depends. It depends on the right guy, right time, right, right story. A winning streak for a winning streak's sake to me doesn't mean it, it, it doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Right. It's entertain me. Tell me a story. Now, if the winning streak is part of a story that is unique and uh different like that, then then sure. I, th- I think that works. But the um the stuff with Sadaka and uh, Doink. I mean, you're talking to the guy that thought Doink was the greatest thing in the world. I I would have put the championship on Doink, frankly. You liked him being a heel champ? I loved him being a heel champ. And if it was my way, then then you would do the undefeated streak and it would still be going on today. That's right. Doink would still be the champion. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 30 years. 30 years undefeated. Undefeated. Doink the clown. WWE champion. Even when Matt Bourne passes away, just put somebody else. Even when Matt Bourne passes away, but you don't replace him with any of these other goofs they replace him with. Do holograms, man. Make it real. Because I can feel it. You think the there's the only any- doink that was worth a shit other than obviously Matt Warren was Steve Kern. Was Steve Kern say. was excellent, is is yeah, doink. He was. The rest of them, the rest of them just fit the outfit. You didn't like Brooklyn Brawler as Doink? Hated it. Sucked. What's your favorite Brooklyn Brawler match? Yep. <laughs> so uh, Wait a to talk- I'm trying to think, I don't think I have one. Do you? So you're saying if if you had total control of the book and that pesky Vince McMahon didn't have a say, yeah, Doink to this day he'd be heading to WrestleMania 40 undefeated. There would be no question. Yeah. 
I could see we that. Would be bring, and we would be, and in addition to that, we would be bringing Dory Funk Jr. back. In hologram form. Dory's alive. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just thinking, you don't want current Dory Funk, do you? Because I can, I got can, a I so help me God, if I was there, and where, where are you again? I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. You want to come to Huntsville and slap? Be in Miami. No, does you that look like Miami, Miami behind me? I did not. I was pointing out that down the same coast you're on, at the very bottom of that coast, it's like this quite, whole show. I might, this whole show. I feel I've been lied to. You thought behind me that was what Miami looked like. I don't look behind you. Okay. So, so WrestleMania 40. If you're if you're if you're one of those news reporters listening to our show, looking for clicks. Uh, Doink rest, you just got Dory Funk, it's Doink, Dory Funk Jr. And and um actually the rumor I heard was that Dory Funk Jr., present day Dory, yeah, he's gonna stack Roman, Cody, and Rock on top of each other. He's the new champ. Well, let me explain this, and I will say this in all seriousness. I do think that Dory Funk Jr. at the whatever age he is now, he Dory is 83, I believe. Um, maybe he's not that old. I don't know. He's but I do. He'll be 83 this year. He'll be 83 this year. Uh, could, could probably still go out and work a match better than a lot of people that, uh, are out there working, especially out on the independent scene and other places. So, yeah, I do think that Dory Funk Jr. It may be a little slower, but by God, you'll believe it. By God, put him in the elimination chamber. Would you do that? If two of those pods in the elimination chamber are doink. <laughs> That's what I was doink. ready for. Doink, Dory Funk Jr. It. it works because it's like the double Ds. It is. Doink and doink Dory. And Dory. Yeah. Yeah, but everybody knows. By the way, we have a brand new Doink and Dory, Dory shirt available now. <laughs> Something to wrestle shirts.com. <laughs> What the fuck are we doing? We're supposed to be talking about the Tonka here. What? Well, hey, no, wait a minute. You, you, and your little sidekick over there that probably has his shirt off and is playing with his nipples right about now, you're giving me shit, and you're thinking this is going to be a <laughs> shitty show because you're in a bad mood and you're hurting. I'm not in a bad mood. You haven't I slept since last year. Mood. You last slept on Christmas Eve. So. Well, that means you're not going to be in a good mood. Well, but I am. And okay, so like oh, the nipple player over there playing uh, dueling banjos. I can't, I can't do it with this arm, man. You know, at the end of the show, okay, at the end of the show today, okay, Silva, dueling nipples. Okay. Okay, so get ready, and it's going to happen, and you're not going to get out of it, and um, we'll take it from there. So Tatanka uh, gets some bigger shots. He's going to start working with Ric Flair on a TV taping. He's going to do some house shows against Shawn Michaels. I mean, th this is moving up the card here, and he eventually is announced as participating in the Royal Rumble, and the undefeated streak continues, even after being eliminated at the Royal Rumble by Yokozuna. Uh, Marty Jannetty is fired after the Royal Rumble and Tatanka is pushed into a program with Shawn Michaels for WrestleMania. So it was clear to me as a fan at the time, we're trying to get towards Marty versus Shawn at WrestleMania. I could have got behind that instead with Marty out Tatanka's in. Why was Tatanka the right guy to pick for Shawn? Well, I think when you, you, you look, you're looking for something new. Yes. Okay. So, uh, two young talent um both with great futures one goes well you slide the other one in and that's about as basic as it gets it's it was easy it was easy to do and it made sense they were the opposite you know tatanka tatanka was was very you know pretty much straightforward and tatanka was um that stand-up guy Whereas Sean was, you know, the cocky, arrogant, uh, boy toy. 
Tataka gets a win. It's a non-title win over Shawn Michaels to get the program started. I got to write down banjo because I forget sometimes, but we're doing banjos at the end of this. Got it. Okay. Is Tataka is going to pin Shawn Michaels again in a six man involving the nasty boys and the Beverly brothers. I mean, it feels like we're headed towards Tataka becoming the intercontinental champion based on that, but it doesn't happen. Sean, who's now with Luna Bashan, no longer with Sherry Martell, is going to retain his title at WrestleMania 9. When he's counted out, of course, the title doesn't change hands on a count out. So it's a nice story, I suppose, of an undefeated baby face and a chicken shit heel champion. But do you remember there being any I serious? That. I love your Luna impression. Any serious consideration behind uh putting the Intercontinental on Tatanka? Or did you like having a heel IC champ? Loved having Sean as the IC champ, but there was a lot of consideration as far as uh, making Tatanka champion as well. Tatanka is going to then transfer into a program with Bam Bam Bigelow instead of continuing this IC chase. He gains a victory over Giant Gonzalez and finds himself in the King of the Ring tournament. And the Bigelow story really heats up when Bigelow and Luna go to attack Sherry and Tatanka makes the save, but he's overcome and Bigelow cuts off some of his hair. So Sherry and Tatanka together, how did we think of that? Did you think that combination could work? And what was it about Sherry that you thought she added to the Tatanka presentation? Didn't have anything to do uh, for Sherry really at the time and thought it would be a unique and different presentation for her. You know, you think of sensational Sherry, give me a time when she was a baby face. Very, there was very, very, very short period of time that we tried to make her baby face when she first came in as a worker. Uh, it was an experiment. It was an experiment to see if um, Sherry could help, but also know that you had that turn down the line. And it was a different look. Bigelow is going to start bringing Tatanka's hair ringside for his matches. And so uh, help me God damn it makes me as mad as just taking another man's jacket. Or his eagle feathers. Or his eagle feather. Tatanka gets still, a win. still burns me to this day. Tatanka gets a win over Big Low by count out. <laughs> Y'all think this shit's funny? I got goddamn, I got chunks of hair somewhere in here. Uh, you have to talk whole, I got I got I got whole ponytail hairs somewhere in here. Do you know that Charles Robinson still has a bag of Ric Flair's hair? Well, that's stupid. When Rick had his head shaved in WCW, Charles Robinson still has it in a Ziploc bag. My my daughter, who I, did, I, I fought tooth and nail to cut her hair or, or to not cut her hair. Um, when she finally cut her hair for the first time, first haircut, I have the ponytail and then I had the second one too. Cause I'm you getting mad. I would want her. I, I, I liked her hair long and, and cute and sweet like she is. And then like cut her ponytail off. And I, I usually, I, I will take it out every once in a while and like threaten people with it and say, so we got you all going to pay for this. How many houses have you moved where you've moved the hair with you? Um, one, two, just three. I just find it interesting that, you know, a lot of people, when you're packing and moving, you find yourself decluttering in here. and they're like, ah, we don't need that anymore. But you're like, oh no, got to keep what? this fucking hair. It was her first ponytail, man. It was the first time she got a haircut. What was she? What was she like? 15? No, she like three or four. Um, sweet little angel. What about Kane? Where's keep... that goddamn Kane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you set me up for that one. Tatanka gets a win over Bigelow. We, we want Kane's hair just. We want Kane's hair off the premises. Okay, look, hey, look, hey, make sure that shit don't be falling over here on our property. All right, Do it you in the street. Need to go somewhere and have them put like the the cone around him like a dog going in like a hazmat 
and then cut his hair. Oh, um, Tatanka gets a win over Bigelow by count out, but Bigelow attacks him and cuts even more hair off. Where's Brutus when we need him? And they work over the summer on the house shows. Tatanka's also going to start working some matches with Razor Ramon and even Terry Taylor. What was Tatanka's um, reputation amongst the insiders in the business, whether that's the office or the talent of him as an in-ring performer? I think that everybody thought he was a very good in-ring performer. He was a good in-ring performer. He was there for things, uh, understood the business, executed well. And, you know, it always, it always helps when, when you're a nice guy too. It always helps when you've got the experience and you're not an asshole about it. And, uh, you know how to present yourself and the presentation Chris Chavez gave was all of the above. He was like, okay, sure. He was a businessman. He was a businessman. He was a good businessman and was willing to to work with you. Lex Luger. Wait, and even, even Bean thinks so. So Lex and Tatanka are set up to face each other in this King of the Ring tournament. This is before the Lex Express, mind you. We're still doing uh, some uh, narcissist stuff here. They go to a 15-minute draw to eliminate each other in the first round. I like Lex, think a lot of him, but a 15-minute draw, I don't know that I needed to see that and i can't help but think the idea here is oh, hell when you just beat him in three minutes well maybe because we wanted to keep tatanka's streak alive no so, I, why wouldn't you have beaten lex in three minutes but i'm just saying i felt like eventually i mean clearly you guys just didn't want to make tatanka king of the ring so we got to find a way to get him out of here but still have the unbeaten streak intact maybe but we still could beat lex in three minutes <laughs> sure why not okay um did you i, I guess forgot take, i forgot to take my morning pills thank you for making me think of that you're welcome okay could you have ever seen tatanka we know he's not going to win the king of the ring could you have seen him being the king of the ring and moving up the card or did you do you think vince <clears> perceived <throat> that act at being sort of middle of the card respectful no i don't perceive the king of the ring middle of the card at all consider it a heel more of a heel moniker Oh no, I'm not saying that. I'm just well, saying Tatanka. In the middle of the card at all. Tatanka, did you? Tatanka didn't win the King of the Ring. You see, so I'm not asking that. I'm asking, did, did Vince think this Tatanka character had a ceiling? No. Okay. Not at all. I think that uh, everybody saw Tatanka. Tatanka, Tatanka frankly, could have been champion. I think he had those attributes. Was he uh, reliable? I know Jr. always talks about that being a big thing in wrestling. Reliability yes. near the top. He was reliable too. Yes, he was. Tatanka winds up being a part of Sherry's uh, last. Rel- reliable, approachable, and honest. Well, all good things. Uh, Tatanka is going to be a part of uh, Sherry's last WWF appearance for like twelve years. She's going to take on Luna Vachon, and Tatanka would save Sherry from Bigelow again. And this leads to a match at SummerSlam. Where the Cowboys and the Indians joined forces with Tatanka teaming up with the Smoking Guns to take on the Head Shrinkers and Bam Bam. And uh, it's announced for Survivor Series, the All Americans. It's going to be Lex Luger, the Steiner Brothers, and Tatanka taking on the foreign fanatics of Yoko, Ludwig Borga, and the Quebecers. Whew. Uh, we're just we're just grabbing it shit here, are we not? Hmm. October 30th, 1993 on uh, superstars Tatanka's undefeated run finally comes to an end. And you're probably wondering how long did it last? 21 months, more than 21 months here. It's a pinfall loss to Ludwig Borga after Borga uses a chair during a distraction for Mr. Fuji Borga pins Tatanka with just one finger to add further insult to injury. Yoko then hits the bonsai drop several times on Tatanka which takes Tatanka out of the Survivor Series main event here. The execution of the angle was pretty good. I mean, the interference, the pin, the aftermath. Were you happy that this streak was no longer something you had to think about when you're putting TV together? Yeah. I mean, look, it wasn't something that was a a hindrance because we had enough talent that you could always maintain that undefeated streak. But I thought that uh, Borga at the time, 
was someone that you could really push is a monster mega heel. So for Borga to be the one to get that undefeated streak, to me, I, I thought was the right call as well. I mean, Borga, I think he's in and out in like six months or something. When did you realize, hey, this Borga thing ain't going gonna, ain't gonna to work out? You know, it, it wasn't so much... I don't want to say look, he wasn't the greatest worker in the world. He probably wasn't the greatest talker in the world. When Borga walked down the aisle, and this is a very, very unique quality to have, and very few talent had it, you know, but when Borga walked down the aisle, people were genuinely afraid of him. They looked at him and they saw something behind those eyes that said, I will eat your heart out and spit it down your wife's throat. Didn't care. There was a there was a reality in Borga. No matter how great of a you know how many uh check marks or moons or hearts or stars or whatever he gets in his matches he had a reality about him and there was genuine believability and genuine fear from the audience that the kid would have his hand on the railing but as Borga walked by, you could see his dad take his kid's hand off the railing. Because you just didn't know what to expect with this guy. I see. He he had a believability and a, and a fearfulness to him that is an intangible. That's an intangible. You know, people, people didn't come running up to the Sheik, uh, the Ed, Ed Farhai uh, version of the sheik they didn't come running up to him and pat him on the back on his way to the ring they didn't come ask for his autograph they looked at him and they got as far away from him as they possibly could because they believed he was crazy and they believed everything that they saw about him same thing same thing with borga here and i think that that was you know why he was given that but um the the reason you know for him only lasting six months he was an asshole <laughs> i mean i think he lasted longer than that but it doesn't feel like after he beat tatanka he's not there much longer it might he be was an asshole i mean it just he, he really was he was not a good human being they're, they're really you can't other than you've got a striking look and uh, a unique quality of scaring people. Other than that, there's not a lot of nice things to say about the human, the human being, Tony Hall. Just not, not real. He's not. He's not. Uh, I don't think Tony's with us anymore. Uh, but he's he's just not not a good person. Do I, do I have it right? He was, I mean, the rumor in innuendo is that he was, uh, well, I don't know how to say it. He was a white supremacist. Uh, I, I guess I, 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 heard he had I don't know. I know he had, I know he had, uh, uh, SS tattoos and swat swastika tattoo. Yeah, that's you know, good. did that, that again, that's what I say, you know, once, once certain things were discovered, it was like, wait a minute. Whoa. Hey, yeah. hang on. No. Yeah. <laughs> you got to draw the line somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and there's one thing to, again, different era, different time, different place where that was acceptable. And that was good heat. Really? Is a character. Right, no, like, I'm not, like, I'm not like saying no. I have no. I'm not saying have Adolf Hitler up there and have him cut a promo. No, never. 
I'm saying that to portray someone, yeah, not the character, character, yeah, but to actually be that is different. Is different. Yeah, it's it's just completely different. And once that was discovered, it was like, wait a minute. You know, and got got some half answers and half answers that, that didn't really necessarily meet the mark of uh, saying, all right, we'll overlook this and we'll address it this way. It was, you know what? I don't think we want, don't think we want you working with us. Hey, let me ask you something. Uh, I was in my group chat with my friends the other day when we were talking about the movie, the iron claw and the subject came up about Fritz von Eric. And I know you, you know, grew up in Texas and watching wrestling. So you may be no more details on this than we would, but how did Fritz von Eric go from being a Nazi character to like really beloved? Like what, what happened? What, what was that transition like to make that happen? Uh, he bought out the promoter. Oh, it was just that. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. That's it. He, he, I don't, I don't know if he bought them out or stole them out or I, I don't know what that transaction really was. I've heard two, both different versions. One that, you know, Fritz went in and made himself was the booker and made himself the star and made it so that if I leave this territory dies. Um, I've also heard that he, he paid, uh, paid for it and, and what have you, but Fritz took himself and Fritz booked himself from one of the top heels to, you know, the guy that, that baby face it was the Johnny Valentine. I always call it the Johnny Valentine turn because as a kid to me, there was no one nastier than Johnny Valentine. There's no one tougher than Johnny Valentine. And he was mean and he was nasty and he was believable and everything that he did, you detested. But when he turned babyface, because Wahoo McDaniel said, there's one guy, there's one guy I can tr- that, that I can trust hates them more than they hate me. And that's Johnny Valentine. And there's one guy that I know is tough enough to kick their ass and even the score. And Johnny had that believability and Johnny sold his, every time he, he, he turned, he sold the turns so well because it it would take you, you would take a, a one minute walk to the ring. And Johnny Valentine could take that one minute walk and turn it into a 15 minute frenzy. And Johnny set the pace. He would take a step and he would look and the audience would get louder. And he would look all around. He would take another step and then he would he would look and oh my god it got louder and louder every second and i'm not kidding you he could take a one minute entrance turn it into a 15 20 minute entrance and by the time he hit the ring and got on the ring apron and truly acknowledged the ovation there was nothing else like it man he was he was just an absolute master at that and that was it's an art form it's it's just an art form he didn't rush everything he did meant something if he if he went to to start to take his robe off they came even louder so it's it's just a yeah it's, 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 a, it's a different way. Oh, goodness gracious. It's crazy to think about a beloved baby face Nazi character, but it, Fritz von Eric did it. it he did. It, but, but like I say, again, Fritz was able to do that same thing because yeah. the heel that he was against at that time 
Okay. You can take a heel Nazi character. That was that was then. Yeah. You know, you're talking about in the 60s. That was then. Now I got new heels. Now I've got Vietnam. And if you got Fritz von Erich and Duke K. Mucha, and Duke K. Mucha is talking about how Vietnam has been, you know, wrong, and, you know, we enjoy killing all of your servicemen. Shit you could say in the 60s on TV. And this Nazi says, well, by God, it ain't going to be you. And I'm standing on America's side because I've learned my lesson. And I'm going to teach you one now. And all of a sudden, he went from having a German accent to a, a Texas accent. Because that's where he's from. And he was made. Because he had a new opponent. He had a new force. He had a force that people believed could overtake the new evil. So Fritz took the old evil. So badass. They knew how bad he was. They knew that he was a monster and a world beater. By God, what if, what, what if he was fighting them Vietnam? That's how they looked at him. He became their guy. And then all of a sudden, as he became their guy, he became human. He he actually married an American. Married an American woman who set him straight by God. She helped him find the way and find Jesus and bring us the Von Eric. Tell that story, people could go, Oh my god, isn't that great? What the love of a good woman can do in a family. And boy, I hope those boys grow up right and you watch them grow up before your very eyes. That's how Fritz did it. I mean, generally, I tell yeah. you the exact deal, but yeah. generally, that's how Fritz did it. Well, we know that uh, Tatanka after this squish that he gets from yokozuna not only is he out of the pay-per-view at survivor series he's going to be out for a few months to sell this injury and upon his return he does get some title matches against yokozuna including a title match at madison square garden in january of 94 i mean listen no matter when it happens where it happens how it happens if you're in the main event for the world title at madison square garden man you've done something with your wrestling career have you not know it's a beautiful thing, man. The guidance, the guidance. He's going to start main eventing a lot of other house shows too. This is a lot of trust put in him. That same show at Madison square garden is where Ludwig Borger would crush his ankle. He's never seen again in the WWF and it changes to Tonka's scheduled match at the rumble. I think it was supposed to be Tatanka and, and Borga at the rumble. Uh, he winds up wrestling bam, bam Bigelow at the show and getting the win before competing in the rumble and eliminating his old rival, Rick Martell before Bigelow returns the favor to eliminate him. And uh, Tatanka is then put into a 10-man match at WrestleMania 10. That never happens. It was cut for time. Of course, I, I cut it. I cut it because I don't like anybody in it. That's why. Shit, throw that graphic up there again. I know you don't like, I know for certain you don't like Sean Waltman. I hate his guts. I know you didn't appreciate any of Bob Holly's booking. Ideas. Can't stand it. I know that you hate not only him, but his entire family when it comes to IRS. I despicable Who, people. What have the Samoans ever done for wrestling? Am I right? Please. Rick My Martell's God. a fucking Canadian. I mean, he didn't even appreciate French Canadian. Him. Yes. Even worse. I mean, Bart Gunn, who'd he ever beat? Not Butterbean. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, and, and then double J. My goodness, what what can we say about that scoundrel that hadn't already been said? <sighs> yeah, I, 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 so basically, I I personally booked the match and advertised it as much as we could. Yep. And then right when we got close to it, I uh, I said, you know what, we're not going to do this. 
I heard it was like that scene in that movie where you went to all those guys and you were like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. Fuck you. <laughs> Who was the cool one? I thought it was Billy Gunn. Billy, Billy Gunn, Gunn facts cool? on Twitter. Jeez. Billy Gunn facts on Twitter said he was cool. I was just I repeating know. that. There's an attempt to uh, restart the gimmick when Tataka is honored by Chief J. Strongbow and Chief Wahoo McDaniel and by Lumbee tribesman uh, Ray Little Turtle. <laughs> this all happens on a Monday Night Raw. I guess the question is, is old Ray Little Turtle legit? This oh, yeah, 100%. What, what, what a look this is if you're watching with us over on YouTube. Tell <laughs> exactly. us about this. So, so take a look. Okay. If, if you're looking on YouTube, you Something see, uh, right. let, let's go from left to right. Let's go from right to left. Okay. Got it. Right to left. In New York for the New York Jets, probably n- number one or number two, whoever it is that you're arguing with at the time. Number one or number two most popular New York Jet of all time in Wahoo McDaniel. A legitimate athlete, a legitimate Native American, an all-around badass, and I think this was his first time ever being on a WWE event. Then you have Joe Scarpa. From uh, Georgia, Italy, and he's wearing his headdress he got from somewhere. And then you got Vince. Then you have Native American, full Native American, Tatanka, his headdress. And then you got a guy who looks like tiptoe through the tulip. With me, lady. I mean, he looks like Tiny Tim. With you a like hat. That top hat, you like that top hat? I mean, and, and that's the first shoot. How he? I mean, I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'm sure he's great. I just, you know, but this was, this was very legit. It was very emotional to to talk at the time, as well. Um, to get this so i mean it was uh it, it was a real deal it was just <laughs> oh he's laughed just kind of looking at jay in there and his pleather uh jacket he's got on and i don't know he's presented with this full link lumbee tribe uh chief headdress i mean it does look cool but unfortunately damn it because we can't have anything nice the irs is here trying to repossess it because Tatanka has to pay a gift tax on it. Yeah. That happens sometimes, you know. A gift tax. Yeah. So IRS continues the attack against Tatanka during his match with your favorite, Quang, on uh, Superstars. Oh, it's Quang. Quang, Quang. Quang, Quang, Quang. Okay. Ties him to the ropes, stuffs feathers from the headdress in Tatanka's throat. IRS even attacks Strongbow when he comes out to help. Strongbow happy to be back on WWF TV, do you think? No. Strongbow hated being on TV. Did anybody hated it? Anybody take issue with the headdress and the feathers and stuffing them in the mouth and all that? Like anybody say maybe we shouldn't do this sort of thing? Not at this time, no. It was a yeah. different time. It was a, it was a complete, you know, it wasn't a, a world of, you know, liberal, woke, whatever the hell else adjective you want to add to that. It, it was looked at as entertainment. It was looked at as this is not real. This is being portrayed in an entertaining way in showing things that have happened in the past and emphasizing things that have happened in the past, right, wrong, and or indifferent and telling stories. It's what we do. I didn't, you know, I I don't know at what point we became the moral police. Well, I I think of telling everybody, no, 
This is how you should think about that person that you don't know or anybody else knows. And I don't want, I don't want to learn about history. I just want to tell you how you should feel now. And do you feel good? It's, it's history again. Is it something we do today? Probably not. You're looking at it through 2024 lenses. And and even through 2024 lenses. So, so we can never go back. You, you, you can't make dances with wolves today? Well, Bruce, I think what, I want to clear something up. You said liberal woke. You didn't mean that. You meant political correctness. Like you can have edgy content. You don't mean I only want conservative Republican. I don't know, but show. No. you said liberal. That's not what you meant. What I yeah, what I meant is I don't like anybody telling me <laughs> what I like or what I don't like. Right. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that most people do. I think that a lot of people have grown up being told what they like and what they don't like. And they're being told basically just what whoever is telling them that, what they don't like or what they like. And I think that's wrong. And I think that when we stop teaching and when we stop exposing our children, everyone, to the rights and the wrongs of the world? Or are you going to sit there and, and, and tell me that, you know, oh, hey, it was good that somebody shot Martin Luther King? No. Holy shit. It's horrible. No. You, you will not find it. Unfortunately, you probably will find someone that would, would think that's true. But it's not. No. It's not. I'm just saying that when you when you apply 2024 lenses to something that was done 30 years ago, mm -hmm. it looks a lot different. And when you try and say, oh, my God, it's hideous you did that. Fuck you. You weren't even alive then. Well, what I was asking was, I know that sometimes, you know, you and I as white dudes, we have blind spots because our life experience isn't like everybody else's. Correct. Life. But you do have some other actual Native Americans involved in this. And I just didn't know if anybody said, Hey, I get that this is a wrestling thing, but maybe we shouldn't. But you're saying that wasn't even the case amongst the Native Americans. No, that was not the case. Yeah. Not even. The yeah. the the Native Americans that were, you know, again, throw Jerry Briscoe into that. Right. You know, who was a part of this and who was a part of uh, the creative on it and doing it and saying, you know, why this is deplorable, helping, helping add to the heat and understanding that this is entertainment folks. This isn't real. And if this is the way you really believe, then there's something wrong with you. And maybe you need to go find a mirror and figure out what that is or find somebody to talk to, to help you from being an asshole. No, we did have, you had three of them in the ring there. And again, the fourth being Jerry Briscoe, some of the greatest athletes, Native American athletes that have ever faced, just set foot on God's green earth. So no, no, there wasn't. That, that's something that has come up in the last, you know, five, ten years from uh, from groups of people that just want to make everything, whatever it is you choose. I can choose anything. And I can give you the flip side of how horrible it is and what a terrible person you are for even wanting to be involved in it. You know, come on, folks. Get a sense of humor. Lighten up. Enjoy life. Life's a journey. It's not a destination. Thank you, Steven Tyler. I credit you because it is. And you should live life, not just experience, just live it, man. Don't just experience it. Not just here 
for the ride and to watch things go by and have someone else tell us how to think and how to speak and what to do. Go get involved. Go get involved, man. Maybe you see something that we don't, that you can help us with. But no, not even, no. There was nobody that said, um, excuse me, I think that this is in poor taste. It was more along the lines of, uh, hey, Hollywood has been doing this for almost 100 years. These type of skits. Right. This this branding, this this rivalry, if you will, and portraying it in these ways. So now all of a sudden, some asshole on CNN or something tells you that's wrong. He screwed the Native Americans. Hey, guess what? We did. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we came over and took their land. Okay. Nobody disputes that. So it, it, it's it, it gets into that um, what's right and what's wrong is what's in your head and what's in your heart and, and how you really feel. So, so no, I think every single Native American that was involved in that, you know, felt that, hey, this be a lot of heat because we know what it means to us. Well, after you uh, embarrassed Tatanka and ripped off his feathers and stuffed them in his mouth, there's no payoff. He transitions into a program with Lex Luger. No, he got the payoff because he got the feathers back, so that paid the pay the gift tax. I got you. Okay. He sells out to the million dollar man. I got to say, it does seem kind of odd where you're going from feuding with IRS to joining the million dollar corporation. Can't beat him. Join him. Join him. Do you think Tatanka was prepared to be a heel? I mean, I always preferred Tatanka as a baby face. It's hard for me to, I don't know. I can't get behind him as a heel. What'd you think? As a shit as a heel. Yeah. <laughs> so Tatanka's first big heel interview, man. And, and Chris didn't get to talk a lot. I think Chris thought he was great promo. Uh, as a heel, Tatanka was not a good promo at all. And I'm trying to give him things about the Million Dollar Man and being associated with the Million Dollar Corporation and what that meant and what that bought you. Take a look at me. <laughs> I'm wearing a $40,000 Rolex watch. How many people here make $40,000 $40, a year? This suit took three months to make and cost $10,000. Yeah. Five carats, however much. And, and, and give them things that they can identify with. I can talk about my Rolls Royce while talking about your Ford Pinto. I can identify with the guy paid $10,000 and waited two months for a custom made suit mm. and blah, blah, blah. And I'm giving him all that. I'm giving him this promo and I'm driving it, driving it in about all the great things and what it means to have the million dollar man's money to have those assets. And he's going down the list. And he says, he goes, he says, look at me. I'm wearing a suit from Macy's. I got a custom shirt, shoes from Floorshine. Oh. And I threw my papers up in the air. And Vince is looking at me. I go, I can't make him say it. And he comes back and I said, Chris, you remember how, like, giving you a, the, the custom made suit, the fact that it takes, you know, sometimes two months to make those motherfuckers. 
And, you know, this guy over here is wearing one that's probably $10,000, frankly. And, you know, okay, a custom-made shirt. Thank you for that. Um, but Macy's? Macy, Macy's suits, you know, were 100 bucks at the time, whatever they were. As a, but here's where you got me, man. You got the best shoes at Floorshine. Yeah. yeah. Floorshine is where 30 years ago, when you walked through that mall we were talking about earlier, was where you got all your two pair of shoes for $19.99 or whatever. And, he's, and he looks at me and goes, he goes, well, these are floor shine. They're kind of nice. I think they cost 50 bucks. That's a lot. I'm like, that's my point. <laughs> that's my point. Now with the million dollar man's money, you ain't wearing $50 shoes anymore because that's chicken shit. Yes. And I don't know that that light bulb ever went off. Mm. And maybe it did from the point of view of maybe he was wearing $20 shoes before. Maybe he didn't have shoes. I don't know. And $50 was a shitload of money to him. But I've never paid $10,000 for a custom made suit. I've never done, it's like most people in that audience, you know, $40,000, yeah, that could be a down payment on a home. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, uh... It's interesting to think about the Tatanka character and the, and some of the chances we're taking. And I don't know. I like you didn't really think the heel stuff really worked. Did you think there was more to do with Strongbow or Tatanka uh, as a pair? Or did you think you'd gone as far as you could with that? I have nothing to do with Strongbow. No, I mean, well, in terms no, there's of nothing to do with Strongbow at all. Chief couldn't talk. Chief couldn't work. He couldn't. He wasn't going to make the roads. He couldn't do you. any of that. There, so the story begins, left to do. Story begins with Tatanka and Crush facing off in a King of the Ring qualifying match. The first match ends in a double countout, so a rematch is set for a lumberjack match, and Luger's going to help Tatanka get the win after hitting him with the lowered loaded forearm. And Tatanka begins to show a heel side of things, and at the King of the Ring, he would lose to the eventual winner Owen Hart. Uh, he loses to the Undertaker. Managed by Ted DiBiase, but defeats Nikolai Volkov in a ten thousand dollar challenge match, while claiming Lex Luger is selling out to Ted DiBiase to become champion, and it sets up a match at SummerSlam between the two as Luger denies it, but DiBiase doesn't deny it either. And there's always circumstances where Tatanka catches Luger talking to DiBiase, and there's even a a telephone poll, which was of course profit to the company because you could call in and vote. If you were on whether or not you think Luger is, well, I thought you were mean there was a telephone pole, like a no, you know, call the hotline, blah blah blah. Okay. Um, was it ever considered to move Luger with DiBiase? Not, not that I can really ever recall. So it's positioned as babyface versus babyface at SummerSlam, and it's announced backstage in an interview between Lex and Tatanka that 54% of the fans polled on the hotline thought Luger sold out to DiBiase. And Tatanka is able to win when DiBiase distracts Luger. DiBiase enters the ring with a red, white, and blue bag full of money. Luger kicks the bag out of DiBiase's hand. Tatanka then attacks Luger from behind. He turns heel. It's two Samoan drops, hugs DiBiase, and the two leave the ring together. And a few minutes later, DiBiase is instructing Tatanka to give Luger a little more. And Tatanka applies the million-dollar dream on Lex Luger and then stuffs the money in his mouth. What a turn for the Native American. I got to say, even if we didn't really like him as a heel, the angle was done well. 
hey it's luger it's luger it's luger it's luger oh well it's mm. actually me well i like i like to talk as a as a heel i hated his promos his psychology was a bit off yeah that's all you know because i i think that you know chris chavez came from humble beginnings and I think that he could relate to every single thing that was wrong with that million dollar man gimmick, but he couldn't articulate it. So he's now part of the million dollar corporation to talk us feuding with Lex Luger on the house shows into 1995. And they blow it off with a cage match on TV the week before WrestleMania 11, which Luger wins. Um, I don't know that I ever really thought Tataka was a, was a great fit for being a heel or the million dollar corporation, but was it ever considered when he was heel to change his name? I know that, you know, sometimes we have these over the top names in, in the native American community. Would that have made sense that, Hey, if he's been bought off by the million dollar man that we change his name to. To he who smoke expensive wampum. I don't he, know. He who wears floor shines? I don't know. He who wears floor shine? Yeah. No. Uh Tataka along with an uh, identity. Bam- you want to you want to hold on to that identity. I got you. So his former rival Bam Bam Bigelow is going to get to the finals of the tag team title tournament, these two guys together. Uh that goes down at Royal Rumble 95, and they lose to one, two, three kid and uh Bob Sparkplug Holly. Tataka is here the after call him STP. Or, or, wait, or his friends call him. What, what is it? Is friends call him Sparky or do they call him STP? I thought it was, I don't know. I mean, I produced shit. I came up with the stupid shit. And I don't remember. And, and that is stupid, by the way. Uh, Tadaka's in the background here. Bam Bam Bigelow. Yeah, well, he got over a lot more than anybody you ever got over, by God. Friends call me STP. Traps. I said it. We're setting up uh, LT and Bam Bam. The Tonka gets his one and only pay-per-view main event at the 1995 King of the Ring. Unfortunately, it's probably one of the worst pay-per-view main events of all time. He's going to team with Sid to lose to Diesel and Bam Bam. Um, <laughs> what a bad match that was, dude. Did you guys just fucking draw names? Oh, out? fuck. God, why? Why would we do that? I don't know. I'm asking you. Let's, let's, let's flip it. Comrade, why the hell would we do that? <laughs> God, that sounds worse than awful. Uh, it's the uh, fall of uh, 95, and Tataka quietly disappears from the company. I would, too, if you put me in that match. He returns at the 1996 Royal Rumble match, and then he leaves the company completely a few months later. Why was he in and out of the promotion, and ultimately what led to him leaving the WWF completely? I don't know. I, you know, I don't really remember what uh, took place when he left at the time. Uh, it may just have been time. It might have been, okay, hey, you've been here four years. Go away, learn a new hole but I don't recall any, any circumstances or anything that led to him being excavated from the community, if you will, maybe teaming with diesel. I found it interesting that Tataka, you know, when he leaves in 96, it feels like almost everybody who left the WWF in 96 wound up going to WCW. Tataka does not, he doesn't wind up with ECW either. He does bounce around some indies for like the next decade. Was there ever any consideration during, I don't know, the attitude era, if you will, of bringing him back with, I mean, cause it does feel like you tried other acts like earthquake came back as Golga, for instance, um, was, I mean, you said he was well-liked and approachable and reliable. Why didn't he get another opportunity there? I don't know that he ever truly connected, but in one of say that i mean i don't know that he connected in a way that was so over the top that oh my god we need to talk about um because again he was somebody i think every time that you saw him you were happy to see him yeah 
heel, baby face. He was a star. And uh, so I, I really don't know. Sometimes, man, it's it's just a, a disagreement and a uh, situation where it doesn't doesn't necessarily work. The talker returns to the WWE, believe it or not, in 2005 on Monday Night Raw as a part of the Eugene Invitational. It's a three minute match with Kurt Angle's Olympic gold medal on the line. The Tonka loses the match when Angle attacks Eugene with 27 seconds remaining, causing a, D- a DQ. I have no idea how in the world he wound up back in the company in 2005, but years ago on this very program, you've teased that there is an amazing story around his return. How the shit does this happen? And in those, and in those years, political correctness is probably prevented me from telling a lot of the story. Um, cause it's, I look, I, I love Chris to death. Um, love the Tatanka character. Did I think in 2005, bringing back Tatanka as the headdress wearing Tatanka with face paint was something that was going to be wow. I just didn't see it at that point. I think that he had reached his plateau of that genre character this is bruce thinking obviously i was in the minority um and i wanted to try so, you know i wanted i wanted to try for chris because it was it was it was an interesting thing so the um the sioux indian had pretty much and please forgive me if my facts are wrong on this because uh, I, I don't really know all the specifics of it. But the Sioux Indian had really become the tribe of the Native Americans. So you had your Sioux Council, and the Sioux Indian were bringing in. Uh, whatever Cherokee, Chicksaw, Choctaw, whatever. I don't even know if that's how how it went, but they were starting to allow more tribes to be a part of the Sioux Nation. So the Sioux Nation would become almost America, okay, for the Native Americans. Are you part of the Sioux Nation? Yes, I am. Um It'd be like if you lived in America and you lived in Texas and you lived in Oklahoma, people accepted you everywhere in Texas. And in Oklahoma, they were like, "Uh, boy, that's the only thing that keeps Texas from going into the Gulf of Mexico. Oklahoma sucks. So there was a a conscious effort by a lot of the outlying Indian nations to be under that Sioux umbrella. And in some ways you could call it a union or what have you, but, but it was, it was, um, you want to be recognized by the Sioux nation as a, they be, they became the gatekeepers if you were a part of the Sioux Nation, then man, you were legit. You were Native American. There was no, well, my brother on my fifth side. What? And the, the other thing that was taking place was there were quite a few, uh, you know, casinos. Man, were were bloody taken off, and the way the casino business was being handled in those early 2000s, late 90s, was you had to have X percentage of Native American blood in you to be able to have a casino, Native American casino. 
Well, um, old Conrad Thompson there in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, might have a cousin who had a friend who knew this guy whose uncle ran the bass shop down there in Lumberton and uh, banged a native squaw one day. And all of a sudden now, well, hell, I've got 0 0.00089 tenths uh, Native American blood in me so I can have a casino. And that was really, you know, to, and it was something just because I, I got involved in it from the standpoint of uh, Mohegan Sun and, and Jerry Briscoe educated me on a lot of it and things of that nature. Jerry knows it much better than I do. But where I was offered something at Mohegan Sun to come in and work with their sports and entertainment department. And the position was one of that you had to have Native American blood in you. I said, I, I have none. I'm Irish Norwegian <laughs> and German. Uh, I don't have any, you know, I and I don't. I don't have any Native American blood uh, in me. And the guy doing goes, trust me, we can find some. And it, it, so the Sioux Nation kind of stepped in and started going, hey, everybody else yes. is getting their piece of the of our pie. This is our this this was our land that you know. Christopher Columbus, whoever, however you ever want to view any of all that crap, is now they're doing it to us again mm. by falsifying, you know, your your records. So that, you know, well, Conrad Thompson, he's he's got, you know, less than three quarters of zero eight percent. Native American in him or was in a Native American one time. I don't know. So the Sioux Nation was doing that. So Sioux Nation now is adopting and they're they're really putting a, a lot of the tribes through their paces. You know, we want proof. Show us your lineage. If you are a true Native American tribe, you're going to show us your lineage. And the Lumbee uh, tribe was in that process of becoming a part of the Sioux Nation. A big part of the Lumbee Indian was a gentleman by the name of Chris Chavez mm. who had notoriety, who had credibility, who was a full-blooded Native American that could help them. And, and Chris got involved and Chris, man, did great work with them. And we became involved with uh, some folks out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, wherever they're doing the, uh, the crazy horse. You know what I'm talking about? The, the, the big crazy horse statue on the side of the yeah. mountain. Yes. One of the most incredible things put it on the bucket list to go see one of the most incredible things you'll ever see in your life. So to, to give the Sioux Indian an opportunity to also tell their story about things that have happened and, and what they're trying to do. It's like, Hmm, this could, this could be a good fit. This could be an opportunity to take the Sioux Nation, put them on the map, help explain their plight and what has happened in the past and how they could now, you know, be a part of uh, this. And the Native American are making strides to, man, to, to take back a lot of what was theirs. 
So I got to go meet with Sioux Indian. And I think that the, uh, I can't even think of a bad convenience store to, it, it, it would be like, it would be like, um, instead of meeting with Publix, you're meeting with the grandson of Piggly Wiggly. I got you. And uh, his name was Chief Earl something. But everything that they touted me as to why they were doing what they were doing, what they did and or did not do anymore was exposed in a matter of three days. And I'm like, wow, man, I, I, I mean, we can't do this. <laughs> you know, we, we can't make this claim because they dispelled that claim three hours after they made it. Um, there was just a lot of, there were a lot of things that I felt we need kind of needed to re reconfigure. Um, Chris was great. Chris tried, man. Chris tried so hard and, and he saw it too. He knew Chris knew he was being worked. Uh, we were working them. They were working us. It was, it just was not a good fit. It was also, you know, a time where I'm going out and Vince is like, no, 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 no. You're going to go shoot these because I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I didn't want to touch it. And he goes, no, you go out so we make sure it gets done. So I go out there and we've got the scenery gorgeous. Again, the Black Hills of, of, of uh, the Dakotas. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Buffalo roaming the plain. I mean, it is it is breathtaking um, that that still exists, that we haven't fucked that up and <laughs> developed that yet. Right. So I'm there and I'm, I'm going through stuff and I'm explaining to Chris exactly what I want. Now, how I work is I have a cameraman. I'll usually have a producer, a lighting guy, and a stage guy, and I'll have the talent. And I will tell the talent and I will walk through everything with the talent where I want things, how I want it shot, what I want them to say here, where I want them to go from there. Right. And everybody will walk around and everybody will listen. They'll get their marching orders from what I just did. And then they'll walk away and I'll say, all right, let's go. Ladder up. And we shoot. So I do that. Yeah, I noticed there's this guy. He's got like like a little riding thing, you know. Uh, you've seen him on film sets. He's got the camera on it. Oh yeah, yeah, like looks like us on a train track type. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but it's just no. This is this this one. This one was a dolly one where where it wasn't a dolly one. It was uh, kind of like a ride almost. Okay, brought him up and down. But regardless. So now I'm sitting over there, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm like, let's go. And the, there was a long and short, I'm, I'm screaming, why in the fuck aren't we going? So one guy comes up to me and says, hey, yeah, man, you, you got to cool your jets because See, Barry's got to talk to the DP, then the DP's got to talk to lighting, and then lighting has got to light it, and then they've got to talk to their people, and then we'll do it, and then we'll shoot uh, maybe that middle scene. Now, to steal a phrase from Jim Cornette, I'm looking at him like he's got steaming turds coming out of his mouth. And I'm like, didn't I just fucking do that? Yeah. I mean, I just fucking did that with everybody. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the fuck is a DP? 
director of photography. I hate that you say that and that you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, well, the DP, the director of photography. I said, you mean the fucking cameraman? Right. Hey, he says, you should refer to them as director of photography. My goodness. As a, so the fucking guy sitting in the fucking chair with the fucking camera right next to him who's going to shoot the thing wants to be referred to as a fucking DP instead of, does he have a goddamn name? Now, like, and I'm I'm heated at this point. You're more than half hot. I'm more, way more than half hot. So, uh, the... The little guy, little Barry, is over here talking to the DP who's looking at me like I'm a sack of shit. Yeah. And I go over to him and go, hey, cameraman. I said, do you understand what the fuck I'm looking for? And I'm completely ignoring Barry. I'm like, hey, get the fuck out of my face, dude. Who the fuck are you? Because apparently right. he was the director. And because... What I should have done was I should have spoken to the person that spoke to me who then would speak to the director who would then speak to the DP, then speak to all these people in their world. So and I don't live in their world. So I'm like, it didn't fuck all the way off. And somebody along the line said, he goes, well, we'll just wrap the shoot. I said, wrap the fucking shoot. Let's go. We're done. Wrap it. It's over. Next. When's the next fucking flight back to goddamn Houston? And I started walking off set. And Chris is looking at me going, what are we doing? I'm going to fuck this shit. I'm not playing this fucking game. This is crazy. This will take this will take us a week to shoot. Yeah. I need to shoot a week's worth of shit today. And I left. I left. I'm going back to the to the hotel and um, told the DP, what I, you know, go fuck yourself. Uh, find a name that's better than, you know, dumb something. And told uh, told Barry, I said, Barry, get, just get the fuck away from me. Told the other guy, I'm done. So up there in those uh, Black Hills, not a lot of cell reception. And all of a sudden, I get to the point where there is cell reception. Oh, no. And I've got some phone calls, on <laughs> messages on my thing. Yeah. And I'm not going to say who was calling me, but their initials were VM. Right. And so I stopped because there was cell reception. So I stop on the side of the road and I'm looking at these beautiful Buffalo and all this shit. And whoever those initials are, it's an important person. They're very important. Yes. Yes. And I call and he's like, goes, what the fuck is going on up there? I said, well, let me start with yesterday. I tell them all the bullshit that happened the day before and and why um, all the shit was fucked up the day before. And I said, and Vincent, and we hadn't even, or the, we, we haven't even, we, we, we haven't even like hit record yet. Right. So then I get here today and these guys, and I, I, was like, I got, I got one guy telling me this. I got another guy telling me this. And then he's got to go talk to this guy who then has to talk to four more people who then will decide what section of the shoot that they're going to do first. I said, I define the shoot. I'm one camera. I'm fucking let's go. Let's get this thing going and, and right. get it done. And I said, by the way, I don't even have a cameraman. What do you mean you don't have a cameraman? No, I don't have a cameraman. I got a goddamn DP. Fuck's a DP. Mm. Or a photography. They're much more than a cameraman. 
Jesus Christ. I'm shocked you didn't know that. Conor B. Thompson in fucking Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, you know, he's putting me on hold and blah, 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 and going back and forth. And he says, so I need you to do. Did you turn your car around? <laughs> Go back to the chute. Get everybody together. And explain to them exactly how this chute is going to go. If you need to fire someone, fire them. I don't care. Get this fucking shoot done. You've got two days. And if you don't get the shoot done in two days, it won't be one of them that will be getting fired. Well, wow, okay. So, as long as I have made myself perfectly clear and there aren't any questions on your behalf, do you think you can get that done? I said, I no, actually, I don't know. I, I don't know. This DP is a fucking asshole. The fucking little directors can get rid of the director. So I just said, you need to fire somebody, fire him. So, okay. So I go back. I gather everybody in. And, and you know, you know me, Conrad, how custom I am as saying, hey, guys, look, man, I might have blown off the. Mm -hmm. Stack a little bit there. Um, I heard a talk like that earlier today. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> huh. I'm on a, I got a little upset. Yeah, but here's why. Yeah, Here, here's how we work, and and here's how we are going to do this shoot. Okay, it's not up for debate. I, I will listen to your input when I am laying out a shot as to what you think will and or won't work, but. This is what we're going to do because none of you are coming back with me to face the owner of the company. It's my shoe and my responsibility. And they all look at each other and go, okay, understood. It's great. Roll tape. Let's go. Now, probably the two stupidest things I could have said at that time was roll tape. Since we weren't using tape, it was digital. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they're going, uh, somebody needs to find us some tape so we can roll it. I said, all right, you can be a little smart-ass asshole about it. You can leave now. Just trying to have a little levity. I said, great, you had your levity. At your one. And you only get one. Yeah. And the whole team only gets one. And he just used it. So we did that. And then, then we went to the smoke. Have you ever been to a you ever been to a smoke lodge? No. I know uh, what it is. Sweat lodge. It sweat lodge. I knew what you meant. I've seen it on TV, but I've never done that. Sweat lodge. So it, the way they make it sound is like it's this really magnificent, really cool lodge where you go in and you sit with your buddies and you get naked and you sweat. Sweat all the impurities out. Immense like, heat. You like getting naked with your buddies? Uh, yeah, sometimes. How me and you never been naked together? Huh? Let's get naked together. We've never been naked together. We kind of have. Let's not talk about it on the show. Okay. Um. I mean, in the basement, like we get done, yeah, 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 we yeah. drop our shit and you go your way. I'll go well, my way. I, I still got that video on my phone with the John yeah. Cena. Thing. Okay. Yeah. So we, we do the sweat lodge, man. And, I, and I'm expecting this. Oh my God. This is one of the, the greatest sweat lodges in the entire fucking nation. It's, it's basically, and I'm not demeaning it. I'm really not. Got to put you on hold. One second. All right. While Bruce has us on hold, let me tell you guys how you can support the show. We're excited to announce a new affiliate partnership with Fanatics and the WWE Shop. It's an easy way to support your favorite podcast, and you get to shop for official WWE gear and apparel all by using our special URL. 
It's shopwrestlingmerch.com. That's shopwrestlingmerch.com. Or if you're watching along with us on YouTube, just hit that QR code that's up on the screen right now, or you can just click the link in the description for this episode. We'll also have it up on all of our socials. That's shopwrestlingmerch.com, where you can shop with confidence for your favorite WWE superstar tees, hoodies, caps, belts, and more, all with the official WWE shop. But it helps support our show. So if you're looking for some great wrestling swag and you want to help the show, why not get a great deal at shopwrestlingmerch.com? There's no extra added charge for you. It just helps the show whenever you buy your WWE gear that way. It's shopwrestlingmerch.com. That's S H O P wrestlingmerch.com. And we're back, Brucey. So you put us on hold, but we were talking about that glorious sweat lodge, one of the finest of the nation. You're not finest in the nation. Which basically is a bunch of sticks put together with yep. this fucking huge uh, hole dug in the middle with fire and coal and shit. and I mean it. And then they put tarps on top of it, like sleeping bags and shit, and tarps on top of it. And then you go in there and you sweat, and you smoke them peace pipe. You love the peace pipe, I know that. So, I actually wanted to do it but I needed to produce it. So, and the other thing was, was because this was like the ultimate one that outsiders could not participate. I see. So, um, okay, great. Well, fuck, sorry. I'm reading this goddamn shit. All right, so while Bruce is having a meltdown, let me explain how you can avoid a meltdown. Just hurry to save with Conrad.com. We're going to get you a better interest rate. We're going to get rid of all your credit card debt, and we'll even let you skip your next two house payments. Now, let's talk about one of those New Year's resolutions to save money. It doesn't have to be hard. It's easy at SaveWithConrad.com. If you've got credit card debt, you know it's too high. We're routinely seeing credit cards that have like 28 or even 32% interest. You know you can do better than that. Not only that, but the interest you pay on your credit card is not tax deductible, whereas the interest you pay on your house is. So if you could combine all your credit card debt into one lower monthly payment, not only would you save a bunch of money each month, but you'd also get a greater tax deduction at the end of the year. And did I mention no house payments until April? It sounds too good to be true, but we can do it for you at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit and you don't need money out of your pocket. So what are you waiting for? Get a quick quote today and find out how much money you can save for free. And let me just tell you, if you're not sure if home ownership is for you, if you're feeling stuck in an apartment, we can help you out. Just ask Robert CC. He left us a 4.75 star review over at conradreviews.com. He wrote, being a first time home buyer, Larry and Francis were there to help me through the process and answer my questions. They were patient with me and did not make me feel stupid when I asked questions that a seasoned home buyer would know the answers to. While they could not stop my anxiety levels from hitting a 10 on the Richter scale, both Larry and Francis were there to help me breathe and regain my sanity when the banking system catch fails kept popping up and slowing things down. Now at 56 years old, I own my first home thanks to Larry and Francis. Great work. You too can become a homeowner. Uh, my man Robert was 56 and he did it and you can do it too. It all starts at SaveWithConrad.com. And again, you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. And you have a friend in the mortgage business. That's me. Go right now to SaveWithConrad.com. NMLS number 32416. SaveWithConrad.com. And now, you know, Bruce. I know where I, I know where I finished. We, I, I think I think I know. So we smoke a peace pipe. You're in the peace pipe. And yeah. you, you wanted so to. The but peace pipe, no, I'm not allowed in. Because you're white. Because I'm not Native American. Yes. Only only the Native American. Got and it. And then Chris pulls me off to the side and he says, hey, man, he goes, I, you know, the, the the peace pipe is made up of the the ingredients are made up. It's a it's a tribal thing and it's a spiritual thing. And um, it's to help see visions and to have clarity and the blah, 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 blah. And, and I don't know all of the different herbs that may and or may not be in it. I uh, said, so what you're saying is, is uh, you're going to go in there and smoke dope. Chris, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I mean, I really, I don't, I don't give a shit. Just go, go, go have smoke, some fucking go smoke dope and let's film it. But 
but they got to go through the ritual. Well, the ritual takes several fucking hours. Oh. Of them in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And I'm like, I got my shots. And so we went over and ate some uh, fry bread, the Indian delicacy fry bread. You ever had fry bread? I have not. Bet you have. Have I? I bet you have. Is your mama. I'm Googling it. Ever taken a can of uh, biscuits? Like I know a about can of biscuits, you know, like the little thing you whop it on the thing, and yeah, yeah we call it and biscuits, biscuits. Yeah. and they cut them in quarters. Yeah, then you deep fry them. No, we never did that. Well, that's fry bread. Got it. So you loved it. So, well, no, man. Here's the thing: is they're telling us they're going to feed us all day. They're telling us they got everything to take care of. Nobody has eaten for fourteen hours. And we're dying. So, and there's no place. It's not like you go, oh, well, I'd send somebody 10 miles down the road to a McDonald's, bring us food back. There's nothing. There's nothing right. around. Nothing. Right. Nothing. Nothing. But they were cooking us a special big celebration meal <laughs> featuring fry bread. Now, it was delicious. I loved it. But it was just basically biscuits fried, which I highly recommend. They're very tasty. Not good for you, but, you know, is what it is. So, yeah. Did you get the shoot done? Well, we wrapped the shoot. <laughs> so I'm not going to say I got it done, but we wrapped it. We wrapped that motherfucker. Yeah. And I gave instructions to the folks that we're going to go back and put some shit together. I said, go on back. This is what I want to see. Bing, bing, bing. And there was another producer that was there, writer, producer that was there that was learning. And he says, well, he goes, you know, this is kind of my deal. You know, should I go in and present events? I said, I'm going to ask you a question, man. Do you really think that on your very first time being allowed out in the wild, that I am going to let you go back and present this shit to Vince. And he's like, well, I mean, again, no. Uh, <laughs> dude, it was... It was fucking horrible. It was awful. The <laughs> representation of of who the people were representing the Sioux Nation, I don't believe, and I have no documentation to prove any way, shape, or form, positive or negative. But I think that we were uh, misled and that we were put in a position to give some money to a guy, old Chief Sloppy Earl, that you know Chief um, was there, was there to uh, do this thing with the taco. You got bamboozled, and and I, and I think I think Chris was too far in it to get out. And I don't, I I do not think, I don't think Chris knew. I think Chris saw it once he got into it, but I also think that he was trying to save face, which I also understand. And I just didn't want to put him in that position. What did, uh, what did Vince think of the footage? Do you remember those vignettes? I do not. Let me read. Let, let me, let me catch everybody. <laughs> up. He returns to a full-time schedule at the tail end of 05. Uh, he's on the, uh, Christmas house show loop. He's going to be teaming with Shelton Benjamin to defeat Carlito and Jonathan coachman. He's a surprise entrant in the 06 Royal rumble. And he starts on the comeback on uh, SmackDown a few weeks later Tatanka and Matt Hardy would defeat the tag team champions, M and M in a non-title match at no way out in April and a vignette would air where it promised a new warrior would soon be forged in Tatanka. 
And over the next three weeks, footage would air of Tataka being adopted into the uh, Lakota tribe, I suppose. Lakota. Lakota. And when he returned to the ring, Tataka defeated Simon Dean with his new finisher, which was the Lakota word for thunder. Um, what did Vince think of the footage that you shot here? Uh, Vince puts it up there in some of the all-time worst television ever produced on the face of God's green earth. I'm sorry, V M thought that. V V V. Yeah, V. I call him V. Yeah. September 1st on SmackDown, Tataka loses to The Miz in Miz's debut match. He would later lose a rematch to Miz as well. Tataka finds himself in a feud with Sylvain trading victories with him before he's moved into an angle where he goes into a losing streak, which was what he perceived to be bad decision-making by referees during his matches, especially Charles Robinson. Maybe he had heard about Charles bag of hair and, uh, yeah, this escalated until the October 27th SmackDown when Tatanka alongside partner, Bobby Lashley would lose a match to William Regal and Dave Taylor when Regal pinned Tatanka by illegally using the ropes. And after the match, Tatanka is arguing the decision again and turns heel here, attacking the referee. And uh, then Lashley would try to get him to calm down. And Tatanka and Bobby Lashley are now in a feud here. The next week on SmackDown, there's a new style of war paint for Tatanka covering the top of his face. Uh, and it comes down to uh, the bottom there. And he cuts a promo on Lashley saying he owed neither him nor the crowd an explanation for his actions. And he compared his recent losing streak to the years of persecution that his people had suffered over the years. I'm sorry. Can you you hold the the picture right there that you just had? If you're watching on YouTube, watch that, take a look at it. And if you're not on YouTube, go to YouTube, find it. It is at the, whatever mark it is. And I thought that was Bruce Beefcake. Wow. That's all I have to say. (sighs) He's saying that, uh, he's called upon his forefathers to unleash a new warrior within him. And he said, if Lashley wanted to go to war with him, he's going to go to war with a whole nation of warriors. And eventually Tatanka asked for, and is granted his release January 19th, 2007, but not before ending his losing streak. He beat our old pal, Jimmy Wang Yang. It's his first victory in months and WWE.com would uh, put a bow on the Tatanka run here by saying Tatanka is an accomplished veteran of the squared circle. The native American made a splash upon his entrance in the WWE in the early nineties, remaining undefeated for two years. And then Tatanka would say on his official website that he requested to be released and mentioned he has, he was not done with WWE and would like to return at some point. And he did actually appear on the old school raw WrestleMania 32 and even raw legends night in 2021. So you got to see talk to talk recently. How is Chris doing these days? Excellent, man. Again, he's one of those guys that you're always happy to see like Jim Duggan. I'll go out of my way to go see Tatanka because he's just a positive, good guy and, uh, always love seeing him big hug and, uh, great guy. I mean, he really is. He's, he's just uh, he's just a wonderful human being. I think. Yeah, I think. What uh, What do you think his legacy will be? And 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 I guess the big question this time of year for everybody always is: Do you think Tatanka belongs in the WWE Hall of Fame? I do. I, I think that Tatanka put in the time. I think Tatanka is a character that, as you said, you know, your friend. That a lot of the audience at the time. Man, yes. they they really identified with Tatanka, and Tatanka had one hell of a run, and busted his ass, and was uh, was one of those talent that was very colorful that you remember. Let's do a few questions, then we'll put a bow on this one. Rayback, not Ryback. Rayback wants to know why didn't Tatanka win the Intercontinental Championship? It made the streak pointless i could have seen tataka as an ic champ why didn't it happen bruce because he couldn't beat the champion oh fuck 
Uh, Jeremy has a hilarious question to your type of question. The red hair dye. Bruce, did the carpet match the drapes? I'm not telling. Okay. Well, you were in the mm -hmm. sweat lodge. I don't know what you saw. I didn't I, I didn't get to go in though. Oh yeah. Those Trans those things are only revealed. <laughs> only, in the sweat lodge. Yeah. You got you gotta be special. Um, Kevin Allen wants to know who came up with the SummerSlam 94 angle with Luger as a kid. It was one of the first swerves like that. I can remember. God. Um, you know, I want, I want to say it, it came from, it, it was during a time with Pat and, and Vince and I, and it was during a time of trying to look for something for Tatanka to do. And you know, money is the root of all evil. So for DiBiase to go out and uh, be able to buy someone, especially after, again, going back to history, not, not looking at it through 2024 goggles, uh, you know, the white man came over and stole the land from the Indians and uh, then they controlled everything. So for DiBiase to be able to buy a Native American and use that, that was the reasoning behind it. The Rosen Coaster wants to know, in your opinion, Bruce, what prevented Tatanka from getting to that next level? He was popular and seemed to be in relevant stories and matchups during his tenure, but he was hardly in the title picture, aside from the match with Sean at WrestleMania 9. Well, I think that, you know, more than anything, it just is timing and it's longevity and it's timing along, you know, before, you know, Sean was in the WWE title picture. It was a long time. So it just, some guys are meant for that. Some guys need it. Some guys don't. So some guys, you know, frankly, Eagle feathers mean more than a championship belt. And, and I'm being serious when I say that, that, that he didn't necessarily need that. He had, he had things, he had possessions that meant something to him. He had a heritage that meant something to him that you could needle and pick. We, uh, we're excited to be back next week talking about Batista. We'll pick it up where we left off before. I promise to continue to pepper Bruce with the question that everyone listening wants. To I ask. answered it. I know, but I can ask again. Uh, if you've got a question about Batista, you can ask it at Pritchard show on Twitter and Instagram or something to wrestle over on Facebook. We've got some great new swag, including a brand new shirt that we teased at the top of the show. Uh, <laughs> doink and Dory, uh, something to wrestle shirts.com is where you can pick those up. If you're not watching the show on YouTube, what are you waiting for? We're going to be going live in the new year. You want to be a part of it. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Turn on the notifications bell at something to wrestle.com. And Bruce, you said, don't let you forget. You were going to write it down and you wrote down the word banjos for the end of the show. I uh, sure did. I think we are at the end of the show now. Is there anything I think we are? Uh, have we, are there any stones unturned on Tatanka? Have we told the whole story? There are no turns on the stone. Well, I think if you're thinking what I'm thinking and I'm thinking what you're thinking, I'm thinking it's time. Do you want to go full screen or do you want to remain on screen? Cause I'm, I'm cool to just sit this one out if you want. No, I, come on, man. Let me, let's, let's give him the full screen, man. Well, but he's got to be entertaining. H hit me with he's the old gonna be in, Look, he either is going to be entertaining or he's going to be Aaron Rodgers. Oh, he's off the show. Yeah. Well, but sure. as he's getting ready, do you want to, you want to tee him up with that, that great, fabulous blackjack lands a line, which one not? drop the laundry, Silva, drop the laundry, kid. Oh, drop God. the laundry. He ain't going to do it. Look guys, look, you, nobody wants this to see this a looking show. This is a podcast. You listen to a podcast. Yeah. Okay? Now, uh -huh. for the few and very fortunate, actually, it's not few, it's a lot, but for the very fortunate that watch all on YouTube. Of us on YouTube, hundreds um, of thousands. This, this, is, this is what we call bonus content. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you have I no one here knows, including you, this beginning of this show. What the fuck you do? <laughs> Nobody knows what you do. It's fair. That that is fair. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. Bing, bing, bing. No, no, okay. So one. Drop the laundry. No, you gotta do the whole thing, man. Bing, drop bing, bing. the laundry. Get it off. Wait, are you really gonna make him do this right now? Yes. Wow, I never seen bullying live. Okay, you know, <laughs> You know, I, I, I have. I'll, 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 I'll see. I'll, I'll see you guys in June. Hey, why don't it's you? Oh, no. <laughs> Silva, drop the laundry. I'm back on Bruce's side now. We got to keep the train on the tracks. Would, would you feel better if you could throw a stack of eight by tens at him? I don't like doing things twice. Oh, he did it. Now position the camera so we can see those nips. What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> Look, this is the, the, why. Why are we doing this? Because no you wants, said wants you were entertaining. What? Nobody wants to see this. Everybody like, wants to see this. I feel like I've I've seen pre rolls for this before. I watched three porn. <laughs> now go full screen. What? Go, go full, full screen. screen. Oh god. Okay. What just happened? It's not it's, how it goes. I think that's how you get that is it. not even close to how it goes. How does it now go? you got me and Conrad all fucked up? Where I'm Conrad, he's Bruce. No, I'll tell you this. Diddling, ding, ding. And then get the fuck into it, man. That was the shit. You were doing some fucking mariachi goddamn band playing at ponchos when they raised the fucking flag for more sopapillas. Sopapillas? I mean, I got it queued up now. <laughs> Bruce. What are we doing? Something to wrestle. Not being entertained. It's fixed to get going. Is he going to keep up? Uh -oh. The tease is killing me. Bravo. Uh, Silva did something. I don't I don't know if that was legal. I don't know if we can show any of that on YouTube. Something to wrestle.com is where you can see. And, and I would also like to point out that 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 uh you know because that obviously is seen from deliverance that in the rest of the scene it's from deliverance. I'm Burt Reynolds and Conrad is Ned Beatty. So Dave is well, I don't know what the fuck that was, but wow. Do you do you feel at all bad about, about what, what you just did to Dave Silva there? No, seriously, why? Because we entertained our, our audience. I don't know that anybody was clamoring for that. But now I, I worry that since you've done it, people are going to request it more often. 
Well, I mean, wouldn't you? Got to play the hits, I suppose. Okay, seriously, having seen that, I, I'm going. Are to you not happy that we did that? I'm going to request it, but I, I mean, I feel like you put him on the spot here today. But aren't you glad I did? Look, there's a lot of times where it's guys go, oh, man, I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do. I don't know if that's what I want to I don't know, I do. And then they do it, and then they're great. And then it's like, holy fucking shit, a new career spawns from it. And it's all they're known for, and they oh, become famous and wealthy. <laughs> hey, you want to fucking do it? Don't do it. Fuck it. Take it out of the show. Take it out you, of the show. Fuck it. No, you, fuck it. You think Dave Silva's going to become a famous and wealthy titty slapper? If you play that, he could. He's got a new career in titty slapping. He could. Okay. Because I'll be Nate, honest. Nate, I, huh? I thought you were just wanting nipple tweaks. No, I want no. He did it. Yeah, just like we did. Does he have to do it next week during Batista, or can you come up with something different where maybe he doesn't? Can he come up with something similar, though? Oh, Tusk. What? Tusk. What is Tusk? Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> University of Southern California uh, band. I don't think I can play Tusk. Yeah, we, that one. That one. They might. Yeah, that one. I don't think is public domain. No. Uh, so Silva, uh, maybe you'll be okay for uh, shit Batista uh, part two. No, no, we should, we need to have some for Batista. You want to do titties again? I, I actually, let's don't do titties. Do butt slaps. We can't show butthole on YouTube. Don't show the hole. I don't think you're. It's going to take a lot of fucking manpower <laughs> to get to see that butthole. I feel I feel like we're this, this is your life, man. See, I know. see this, this it's a weekday. I'm, I'm at home on a weekday doing this with you. I'm I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to explain something here, D. This, this is someone standing up the night before you wed your lovely bride. Yes, I recall. And telling a story that yep. nobody there is ever gonna forget. That's true. It's moments, all about moments. You created one today. But no, kill it. Fuck it, kill <sighs> it. You know what? You kill it and then fuck Silva. He didn't do his job for this show. Fuck him. I'm done with him. Kill it. Kill it. Hey, hey, this is Bruce Pritch. Thank you for listening. Rock on. Peace out. We'll see you next week. Hopefully, we'll still have a video producer. And if not, we will definitely have a fuck Dave Silver shirt available at thingdressalshirts.com. Call me. uh, I'm the director of photography. (laughs) The director of photography of (laughs) somethingtowrestle.com. We'll see you next week for Batista right here on Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. Fuck Dave Silva. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad-free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad-free shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like title chase, Eric fires back conversations with Conrad and the insiders. Plus new series like The Book with David Crockett, Monday Mailbags with Mike Chioda and Nick Patrick, and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early. You can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch-alongs, Q&As, and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today. And hey, when you do, the first week is completely free, adfreeshows.com.